Welcome back, folks. In this video, we're going to be talking about the difference between the sum x function, which we've been using a fair amount of, and the sum function, or more generically, uh, the shortcut version of all of our uh, x iterators, of all of our aggregation iterators. So let's get started. I'm here in iterators.xlsx, and I'm in the sum x versus sum tab, right? And here in our first example, it's actually done for us. Uh, we've got some uh, code right here, right? This basic builder pattern where we derive all divisible rows of many. We're gonna add a column where we get the units for each row and then we sum up the results, which is what we get right here and we end up getting four uh, with the, the knowledge that this happens in the filter context of type equals dine in. Okay, so uh, that's fine. Now, some folks who have either taken a class in DAX before or have just sort of poked around in it before uh, may ask in a situation like this, hey, uh, you know, I'm just adding up, I'm just summing up the units column. Why do I have to write all of this when I can write the much shorter version right down here, right? Rather than doing sum x, mini, mini units, right, which takes four lines, why not just write sum and then in open parentheses, mini units and then closing parentheses. If you were to write this in DAX, you would get the exact same result. You would get four and it would work very, very consistently. So why? Why in the world am I having you, am I having you, or am I maybe suggesting that you write it in this long way? How could we haven't looked at these guys yet? And the short answer is, this is a shortcut way of writing this right here. So when you see uh, a function like this, like sum or average or min or max, uh, those aren't real functions. I mean, they, they, they are, you can use them, but really those are just shortcut ways of writing the sum x, min x, max x, average x version, right? So uh, if I were to ask the question, how does this sum function work? If I were to ask it to a casual user, they would say, well, clearly, obviously, it takes the sum of the units column in the mini table, right? And when they use it, uh, it, it seems to work correctly. However, that's not how this actually functions. This code right here does the exact same thing as this version up here because it's the same code. It's just a shortcut way of writing it. So how does this thing work? Well, it's going to start by deriving all the visible rows of mini, assuming we've got a filter context of type equals dine in. If our filter context was something else, we'd set it to dine in. We get all the visible rows of mini. Do this with me if you want, or you can just watch. Watching's more important on this one. Control V to paste it, right? And then uh, what does it do for every single row? It gets the units for that row, right? And then it grabs that formula and drags it down. And when it's done, it sums it up, right? Sums it up right there. Whoops. It, something I could type this correctly, it sums it up. There we go. So, it doesn't produce the wrong answer. However, uh, if you write it like this, it becomes very, very difficult to understand how this thing works, right? Uh, I know we've been practicing a lot, but if I were to tell you to reproduce what I just did, you probably wouldn't be able to do it. If you were to look at this code even tomorrow, you would say this thing works by summing up the units column in the mini table, and it's not. It sums up the expression column and a derivation of the mini table, right? A completely different thing. With this version up here, you could see all of the working pieces. With this one, all of that stuff is hidden. Let's look at one more example. One more example. Okay, so uh, max down in price per, right? So we wanna find the maximum price that anybody paid for something. Oh, well, that's easy. Uh, we go derive the mini table, all the visible rows in mini, uh, given a particular filter context. In this case, it's type equals dine in. We get all the dine in rows. We add a column where we get the price per for every single column. So seven becomes seven, 11 becomes 11, seven becomes seven. And then we take the max of it, which gives us 11, because 11 is the biggest number in this expression column. Okay, now that works and that makes sense. Uh, why not write it this way? Why not just use the max function where you're taking the max of the price per column in the mini table? Well, because that's not what you're doing. The way that this thing works is the same way that this one works up here. This is a shortcut way of writing this. And while it requires fewer keystrokes, it's a lot harder to see what's going on. It's very difficult. It's very difficult to look at this code and understand intuitively that, oh, I see how this is working. The first thing this does is it derives all the visible rows of mini, given the current filter context. So type equals dine in, right? Do this with me if you want. Control V to paste, right? And then for every single row, 
It goes and finds the price per for that row. And then when it's done, it maxes the result of this expression column, right? Gosh, I'm batting a thousand today. Max. Closing parentheses and enter, okay? Now here on this Excel workbook, it's not too difficult to make that translation in your head, particularly because you've got this example up here. However, when you're working with DAX, when you start writing this, you're not going to remember that this adds a column to a temporary table and then takes the max of that column. You're going to think to yourself, it just takes the max of that column by itself, probably in the actual physical table, which is not what it's doing. Okay, So all of the common iterators have a shortcut version that works just like this. If you've got sum x, you could do sum. If you've got max x, you could do max. If you've got min x, you could do min. If you've got average x, you could do average. And all of these are just shortcut ways of writing the x version over here on the left, right? So which one should we use? Well, I think you've gotten a sense of what my preference is, but let's, let's look at some reasoning behind this, okay? So uh, here uh, on this page, we've got two uh, bits of DAX code and they each have the same mistake in them. Now, don't worry, I don't want you to find the mistake. Uh, goodness knows you couldn't possibly do this right now. That would be way too difficult, right? But I want to point out that both this code and this code have the same mistake. And in order to solve or find solve the problem of where the mistake is, in order to find the mistake, one of the things you're going to have to be able to do in both of these examples, as well as other uh, DAX problems, is spot all the derivations, okay? So uh, even though you couldn't find the problem, I wouldn't expect to be able to do that, I bet I could ask you to go find all the derivations, right? And even if you felt a little apprehensive about it, I'll, I'll even help, right? Let's arrow down. So if I were to scan through these bits of code, right, and just highlight where the derivations are, uh, you get this right here. So here on this version, I can see that one, I can see that one, and I can see that one. And over here on the right, I can just see that one right there, okay? So my question to you, how many derivations are in this code and how many derivations are in this code? And if this feels like a trick question, it is a trick question. Don't worry, you're not supposed to get it right. Okay, so here on the left, on this version, right? One, two, three. Ah, there are three derivations. So I'm gonna click down here, type in three and hit enter. And sure enough, I get three derivations. Over here on this one on the right, well, there's just the one derivation right there. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna click in here and type in one and I'm gonna get the wrong answer, right? There are actually three derivations in both this code and this code. In fact, this is the exact same code. The version on the right just uses the short form of these iterators. So here where we've got sum x, mini, mini units, blah, 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 we've just got sum. And down here where we've got max x, mini, mini price per, we've just got max, mini price per. So on this version on the left, it's pretty easy to scan the code and find all the places where it just says mini and just highlight them. By contrast, over here, there is a derivation hidden in line two, and there's a derivation hidden in line seven, and you can't find them because they're not written in the code. You have to be pretty darn good at DAX to see this snippet of code and intuitively in your head, make the translation to this version where you can easily spot the derivation. And I promise you, when you're going to fix even moderately complex DAX code, being able to spot those derivations is gonna be super duper important, right? Okay, so uh, that is why I recommend, especially when you're learning DAX, you should usually go this way because A, well, actually, uh, let me jump ahead. I'm, I've got this sort of summarized down here. I'm, jump, I'm getting ahead of myself because I'm so excited. Okay, let me click down here, get these things lined up. Uh, so which one should you use? I think you already have my answer, but uh, you know, it, it does always depend. Um, so this short form version right here, where we hide the code, this is sort of the shortcut version, uh, it does have the advantage that there's fewer keystrokes. Uh, it's gonna keep the code shorter, especially as DAS gets very long, it's tempting to keep things shorter. And sometimes it's a good idea to keep things shorter. And the intent of it is very clear, right? If I show this to um, pretty much any user, even if they don't know DAX very well, they kind of get what it's doing, as opposed to this version over here, where it's a bit less uh, intuitive or obvious. However, what are the costs? It's gonna make tracing problems much, much harder because you're gonna to need to be able to spot those derivations and you can't see them in here unless you're really good and can look at this code and translate it to this in your head, right? Also, it's gonna reinforce incorrect notions about how DAX works. If you look at this code, even after having watched all these other videos, 
tomorrow you're probably still going to think to yourself, this sums up the units column in the mini table. Nope, that's not what it does. This code right here derives a temp table with all the visible rows in mini, adds an expression column where for every single row it takes the units of that row, and then sums up the results of the expression column. Okay, This version over here makes that very difficult to see. This version over here makes it quite obvious. So the long form version, I mean there's more keystrokes, it's going to make long code even longer and the intent is less obvious. I'm aware of these costs, but it's going to make error tracing much, much easier, right? Because you can easily spot the derivation. And every time you type this version out, it's going to reinforce in your head that this is how DAX works, right? You derive a temp table, you add a column to it, and you do some aggregation on it, right? Derivations and iterators, okay? So I would recommend that when you're starting out, particularly when you're in this class, in fact, you have to do it in this class, you want to use this form when you're starting to learn DAX because it's going to continually reinforce those good ideas. It's also a good idea if you get stumped on a hard problem and you've got a bunch of snippets that look like this in it, translate the shortcut versions to the long versions. Oftentimes that will be enough to help you spot the problem. Now, uh, once you've, I say here, once you've written it 500 times, once you've written this long version 500 times, you could go ahead and use the short version. And I think that's about accurate. I mean, you don't need to have a chalkboard next to your desk and count to actually 500. Um, but what I would say is you wanna make sure you've done this enough times that you could very easily in your head look at this and translate it to this. Once you've gotten to that point, this is a perfectly fine version to use. But while you're starting out, I highly recommend this. And I, I have to say, uh, over the last several months, I started using this version more and more and more because to me, it really emphasizes what's actually happening behind the curtain, which is super duper helpful. Okay, that's it. Uh, we're done with our aggregation iterators. We're gonna move on to the filter iterator, which should be a lot of fun.